up my soul, lift up my spirit to my Lord. To you I lift up my soul. Make me to In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Once again, we, dear friends, we begin the season of Advent, this time of preparation for Christ's coming into the world on Christmas morning. But this is also important to note, Christ has already arrived, now he will come back again as a judge. In the meantime, we are asked to be vigilant and watchful. As a sign of a beginning of this beautiful season of Advent, I ask Rosemary to light the candle, please. Let us pray. Lord God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its Savior, who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. Pour forth your blessings upon us as we light the first candle of this Advent wreath. May its light reflect the splendor of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with the righteous deeds of this coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer, you are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you. While you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from of old. No ear has ever heard, no eye has ever seen any God but you, doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay and you the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hearken. From your throne upon the cherubim, shine forth. Rouse your power and come to save us. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted, the son of man whom you yourself made strong. May your help be with the man of your right hand, with the son of man whom you yourself made strong. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life and we will call upon your name. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus. That in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the rev revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you from to the end irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Show us, Lord, your love and grant us your salvation. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It's like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore, you do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight, or at a cockerel, or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Young priest was re recently ordained, was preaching his first sermon. He was very nervous. He started his career as the first day of Advent, so he picked up the text, Behold, I Come. He started the sermon like this, and his brain went blank. Uh, bravely, he repeated the same thing, I, Behold, I Come. Still his frightened brain would not function. Third time, 
he leaned over the pulpit and repeated once more, Behold, I come. At that moment, pulpit collapsed. He fell down and tumbled over the, into the lap of a lady in front of him. And he got up, red-faced, stammered, Oh, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. The lady was not upset and replied, That's all right. I should have been expecting you. After all, you gave me three warnings. <laughs> the word for this first Sunday Advent is actually, is not waiting. The word is watch. It has a deeper connotation. The word is awake or watch. Awake, be alert. Question is, are we awake while we are waiting? Is it last three parables, last three weeks, brings to our attention to this. Talents, ten virgins parable, and also the last judgment. In all this, we find one thing. They had been waiting, but not awake. The Greek word St. Mark uses, by the way, hereafter for one year, starting for this, Lent, uh, for this Advent, we'll be using the Gospel of St. Mark it's for the Sunday readings. He uses the word regorio. It means the same thing, alert or watchful. Regorio, from which we have the name Gregory. So are you all awake while you are waiting is the question. Waiting is not in our dictionary. Especially in our culture, we don't want to wait. We have to get immediately instant gratification. That's our norm of life. You know, Amazon Prime is supposed to come the next day. You don't get it, you get annoyed. You cannot wait. And the same thing, a deeper and deeper, so many things, you don't want to wait in the line, the line. You don't want to wait for anything that is expected. Uh, this is the way we show our anxiety. There is no room for waiting. Our focus today, what our Lord is saying, is the same thing. Advent is the second coming, because he already come in Christmas. Now he is going to come back. Even there, he's not going to come back in a very subtle way. Yes, he is going to be our judge, the final judgment. Even prior to this, Jesus said, I am with you always, till end of time. So there is an intrinsic connection between the second coming and his presence now. Then what is the meaning of wait and watch? It is the question of deeper level. When he says, I am with you, go back to last week's uh, gospel, did you recognize me in others? All along your life, I was with you, did you recognize me? So his presence, spiritual presence, is always there. That's what Jesus is asking us to focus on. Watchful, watchful. I am present. I will come back, but my presence will be always there. Without me, you could do nothing. It's on a very supernatural level. So you have to get into that kind of sacred time. It is where you begin to encounter the presence of Jesus, sacred time. I often tell you, finding God in others, finding God in the world, finding God in oneself is kind of mystical. How do you do that? The instrument is the time. Time is the instrument where you need to focus. 
Time is not there, time is not there, time is not here. Time is a momentary instant. That is the gift of God. It is here, it's like a pregnant with the presence of God. Unless you meet that moment, you cannot bring forth Christ in your life. In other words, how many times, even in a little conversation, do we focus, concentrate, or pay attention to what did I say? Why did I say? We never ask that question, which means we allow the time to pass by and we get encaged in our own agenda. What happens? We miss the opportunity where that particular moment we do anything is so much full of God's presence and grace, we miss. Be alert. Very difficult. You may say, oh, I cannot be thinking of this every moment then. That is the way we are drawn away, blown away by distraction. Distraction. That's why church encourages you, pray, constantly pray. The prayer of rosary. A meditation, especially. A contemplative meditation trains not your brain, your spirit, to focus on the time where God meets you. In other words, the moment. Every time God has given, whether it's 4.30 or 5.30, even now, it is there you meet Christ. Do I have that kind of deeper sense of awareness? You don't. We are going to get it? We may not. But we will still go. The best example, when a mother brings forth a baby the, during the time of pregnancy, she waits. It's not just waiting, 10 months, but it's the watchfulness that makes the motherhood beautiful and the baby to be born beautiful. It is in that 10 months time, it's not only watching what's going to, how oh, baby is going to come, it's not that. It's most intensely every moment, moment every minute, every segment of the time, you are alert for the baby inside. You do everything for the safety and nurture of that baby. That's why you have to translate to our life every moment, every second, every minute, God is there, full life, to meet with us, to give us the fullest sense of grace and blessing. We focus on the people, we focus on material things, we focus on anything else. We don't, in other words, we don't give time for the spiritual presence of God. Spiritual presence. That's the most important thing. Not even a one second we take, unfortunately. We are more into routine, formulary prayers, not paying attention to what you are saying, even there. So today's gospel, it is the most important thing that it, though it is difficult for the waiting, the most important thing is whether we are paying attention to it. Because attention demands patience, alertness, and attentiveness, vigilance. So it includes three components for what? It's not to celebrate Christmas. Yeah, Christmas will come and go. For what do I celebrate Christmas? Does it have a meaning in my life, especially this year? How do I encounter Christ every second, even dealing with the normal things? That's what Jesus is asking today. It is the toughest thing in the world, but Jesus says, I am with you always. But he says, I have given you everything, as the gospel says, entrusted everything to his people. 
and he went away. And I will come at a time you don't expect. He's not threatening us, but you don't have to worry about it. The time I'm going to come. Because I'm coming, I'm with you all the time. If I am, if you are aware that I am with you all the time, why do you worry about my coming? Whether in the morning and the evening. Focus now. Focus on here and now. That is the source of salvation. Please stand. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God. Be God to not made unsubstantial of the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, the world and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, he has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead for the life of the world to come. Amen. For our church, that through our actions and words we may atone for our sinful ways, especially during the season of Advent, watchful expectancy of Christ's coming, we pray to the Lord. For world leaders may hear the cries of those in need, the poor, the homeless, the persecuted, the brokenhearted, and see the face of the Lord in their suffering, we pray to the Lord. For all who are burdened with guilt, that they may turn to God and come to realize the, boundless, the boundlessness of God's extravagant forgiveness, we pray to the Lord. For those around the world, and especially in our country, in our state, in our town, who suffer from coronavirus or from any other disease like HIV, AIDS, that they may know that the compassionate presence of God will heal them, we pray to the Lord. Now in silence, let us pray for our own personal needs. We pray to the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. A blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Our 
Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gather from among your gifts to us, and may that what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the price of eternal redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. O Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with all the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, and blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with our Pope Francis and our Bishop Frank and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Thomas for Long Jr., whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that Thomas, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 
At the Savior's command and formed with the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. I only say the word, my soul shall be healed. spirit 
as our feet become Christ's feet, we go forth with the grace of the power and the spirit that is he. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Dear friends, I don't know how to begin or to end. It's kind of hard. <clears throat> As of December 31st, I will be retiring from this parish ministry. Uh, when I came back here, I mean, when I came here first time, my intention is to serve this parish till the end. Due to my health conditions. I want to give you fair share and also respect that I should retire. It's very hard. In spite of uh, my spirit, I cannot do that. So with a due consultation with the bishop a few months ago, um, it's allowed to take retirement at the age of 73, no problem with that. But I, at this time, I'm very grateful to God for having given me this 
parish to work here. A good parish, good people to work with. Still I want to continue. First of all, thank God for the Sacred Heart, for the grace He has given me and the strength He has given me to run this parish. At the same time, I'm very, very, very grateful to all of you, my parishioners, for having been with me to bring this flock to Christ, faithful to Him. It is, it is God's blessing that I have it. Now I learned to look at this parish in a totally different view, angle. Every family has problem, every family is a blessing, finally. But if you focus only on problems, we can never survive. Sacred Heart gave me that insight. Because of that, you had been able to thrive, able to come up spiritually well-built, financially well-established, and socially stabilized. Thanks to God's grace. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be, to be your pastor. And also thank you for your patience to having put up with me. <laughs> As I told the parish council members, first two years must have been very hard on you because of my accent. I still, you accepted me. You know, each one, each priest has a personality, plus and minuses. But overall, you t took care of me, put that way. As a mother and father took care of the priests, you took care of me. Because of this, I am proud of this parish to come to this level. Thank you once again. Pray for me. I will meet you again. It's about December 31st. It's the last day. Thank you. Please stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Pray to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, be of a defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell, Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people. Light for the world to see. Longing for